Good morning and welcome back to Bible on Audio. Today we're going to be reading Exodus 7 and 8. And uh, Bible on Audio is just where I read aloud and you follow along with me or just take a listen. Um, I'd like to open up in prayer. So dear Father God, thank you for another day. Thank you for your word and the listener. May they hear your voice and not my own. May we grow in relationship with you. May your word be one that we understand and receive and share with others lovingly. I pray to give you thanks and glory. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Exodus 7. So the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh, and Aaron, your brother, shall be your prophet. You shall, you shall speak all that I command you, and Aaron, your brother, shall tell Pharaoh to send the children of Israel out of his land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh will not heed you, so that I may lay my hand on Egypt and bring my armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt. By great judgments, and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I stretch out my hand and Egypt, I'm sorry, when I stretch out my hand on Egypt and bring out the children of Israel, then among them. It always takes me a minute to warm up, so forgive me. We're going to keep going. Verse 6. Then Moses and Aaron did so, just as the Lord commanded them. So they did, and Moses was 80 years old, and Aaron 83 years old, when they spoke to Pharaoh. Aaron's Miraculous Rod. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh speaks to you, saying, Show a miracle for yourselves, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and let it become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh, and they did so, just as the Lord commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. But Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, so the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner when their enchantments, with their enchantments. For every man threw down his rod, and they became serpents, but Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods, and Pharaoh's heart grew hard, and he did not heed them as the Lord had said. So where we're at is that Moses and Aaron went to see Pharaoh to show a first a miraculous work, which was the, the rod into a serpent. And I find it um, funny that other people, um, that Pharaoh had them also throw down their, their rods to show Moses like that is nothing. But they use sorcery, and Moses and Aaron use God's blessing. So there is a difference. I'm not going to talk about the difference in that. But one is sorcery, and one is God. Okay. So the first plague, waters become blood. Verse 14. So the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hard. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning when he goes out to the water, and you shall stand by the river's bank to meet him. And the rod which was turned to a serpent you shall take in your hand, and you shall say to him, The Lord God of the Hebrews has sent me to you, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. But indeed, until now you will not hear. Thus says the Lord, By this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will strike the waters which are in the river with the rod that is in my hand, and they shall be turned to blood, and the fish that are in the river shall die. The river shall stink, and the Egyptians will loathe to drink the water of the river. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take your rod and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over their streams, over their rivers, over their ponds, over all their pools of water, that they may become blood. And there shall be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in buckets of wood and pitchers of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so, just as the Lord commanded. So he lifted up the rod and struck the waters to where in the river in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants, and all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. The fish that were in the river died, the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink the water of the river. So there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. So imagine, no drinking water, no bathing water. Every bit of water in Egypt, in all the land, is blood. It's useless. And as you know, we all need water to survive. <clears throat> Verse 22. Then the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments, and Pharaoh's heart grew hard, and, did, and he did not heed them, as the Lord had said. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house. Neither was his heart moved by this. 
So all the Egyptians dug all around the river for water to drink because they could not drink the water of the river. And seven days passed after the Lord had struck the river. <clears throat> Chapter 8, the second plague, frogs. And the Lord spoke to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. But if you refuse to let them go, so the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into your house, into your bedroom, on your bed, into the houses of your servants, on your people, into your ovens, and into your kneading bowls. And the frogs shall come up on you, on your people, and all your servants. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your hand with your rod over the streams, of, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up on the land of Egypt. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs on the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go, that they may sacrifice to the Lord. And Moses said to Pharaoh, Accept the honor of saying when I shall intercede for you, for your servants and for your people, to destroy the frogs from you and your houses, that they may remain in the river only. So he said, Tomorrow, and he said, That it be according to your word, that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God, and the frogs shall depart from you, from your houses, from your servants, and from your people. They shall remain in the river only. Then Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried out to the Lord concerning the frogs which he had brought against Pharaoh. So the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out in the houses, out of the courtyards, and out of the fields. They gathered them together in heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and did not heed them, as the Lord had said. Mm. So... This one did get Pharaoh's attention, and he did ask Moses to speak to God for him and say, take this plague away from me. But he recants, and we're going to see that moving on to the third plague. And remember, Moses asked the Lord, and the Lord did so, and only put the frogs in the river. <clears throat> Amazing. 16. So the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, stretch out your rod and strike the dust of the land so that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and struck the dust of the earth, and it became lice on man and beast. I have a real problem with this because as a child, I was very, I was just a, a ragamuffin. So I know, I know too much about this, this part, so forgive me. And they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and struck the dust of the earth, and it became lice on man and beast. <clears throat> all the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Now this is worse than frogs. Now all the magicians, magicians so worked with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice on man and beast. Then the magicians said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart grew hard, and he did not heed them, just as the Lord had said. So here, the sorcerers could, Pharaoh's sorcerers could not do anything with this. They couldn't match the, the what they called magic from God, but truly was just God's um, plague. And it's all the dust was lice. So if you've ever uh, been in a dusty place where you're sleeping, if you've ever done that or you worked out in the field, you know that when you blow your nose, you see all of that debris on your tissues and you're just coughing up stuff. That Could you imagine that all being in lice, like moving little mites? And I can't. I can't. But it is truly worse than the frogs. So if you can imagine, you're already the first plague, uh, the water, blood. You already have nothing life-giving to drink. And then um, there's nowhere to run to, frogs everywhere. But now it gets worse, so it was possible the Lord in his greatness can make things worse. Okay, so let's keep going. So Pharaoh still didn't want to let the people go. That was the third plague. And now we're on the fourth plague, flies. And the Lord said to Moses, Rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh as he comes out to the water. Then say to him, Thus says the Lord, 
let my people go that they may serve me or else if you will not let my people go behold i will send swarms of flies on you and your servants on your people and into your houses the houses of the egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground on which they stand and in the day i will set apart the land of goshen in which my people dwell that you may know that i am the lord in the midst of the land i will make a difference between my people and your people tomorrow this sign shall be and the lord did so thick swarm of flies came into the house of pharaoh and his servants houses and into the land of egypt the land was corrupted because of the swarms of flies then pharaoh called for moses and aaron and said go sacrifice to your god in the land and moses said it is not right to do so for we would be sacrificing the abomination of the egyptians to the lord our god if we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, then will they not stone us? We will go three days' journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God, as he will command us. So Pharaoh said, I will let you go, that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, only you shall not go very far away. Intercede for me. Then Moses said, Indeed, I am going out from you, and I will entreat the Lord that the swarm of flies may depart tomorrow from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. But let Pharaoh not deal deceitfully any more in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. So they're still, you know, he's still trying to work with him. Speaking of Moses, and he still does one more time go to intercede for Pharaoh. Um, so Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord, and the Lord did according to the word of Moses. So he removed a swarm of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. Not one remained. But Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also, neither would he let the people go. <clears throat> That's chapter 8. And I want to say, um, we, we glazed over it real quickly, but there is a difference. Even Pharaoh sees that these plagues do not touch um, the Israelites. They, they were in Goshen and none of these flies went there. The blood didn't, of the water turning into blood didn't go there. The lice didn't go there. So he still there was a difference, and still in the in that miraculous way, Pharaoh's heart is hardened one more time. So um, that was chapters seven and eight. I pray that you are blessed. God bless you. Take care. Bye.